Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you in the button. Welcome to the Hot Hustle Podcast from Hype. This is episode 97. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Big shout out to my man, Bella the Great. Special guest in the building. I introduced him before he even get to introduce himself. Uh, called my man in a pinch 10 minutes ago. Had a cancellation. You know, you always got to have a backup plan. I hit my man. He said, Give me like five minutes. He jumped on in three. So, you know what I'm saying? Even though we still gonna go and introduce yourself to the audience, shouts out to my man for coming through for me in the last minute. Introduce yourself to the audience again. Yes, sir. BTG, aka Baylor, aka Baylorism, Baylor the Great, BTG for President, Open Run with BTG, part of the Rare Signers Network. We also got Black Horror Humor, The Breaks Radio, uh, The Lunch Break Crew. I'm everywhere. I got squads out here. The merch, uh, the dating pool department, and Baylorism. If you want something custom, you want something decent, want something nice, hit hype up first and then come holla at If you're on the West Coast, you know what I'm saying? You hit my man. If you're on the East Coast, we can slide this way. We equal opportunity over here. Just test, step back just to taste for them if they're watching on the eBlock Radio Network so they can get a shot at the merch, you know what I'm saying? Because as you can see, the custom hustle is very well placed. Yeah, you, know what I'm saying? you got like the that. custom hustle. You got the, you know what I'm saying? Teach Copy your man that, squabble. See. You know what I'm saying? Copy that. Shouts out to my man, Bella the Great, though. All right, let's hit the rundown now. March 12th, March 12th, the How to Hustle Live show will be coming up again. How to Hustle Live show. You hit the link in my bio. If you're in the city, you see the posters around town, hit the QR code, get your tickets that way. Get at me and I can slide up on you with the physical tickets. We have them on deck for you. You got no reason not to be in the building. March 12th, How to Hustle Live show featuring... Uh, Sipping with Sammy podcast. Shouts out to Sam and Cy. Uh, they will be in the building and on the panel with me for the live show. Now, eBlock Radio Network, every Monday, 2 o'clock on the eBlock Radio Network. GFT Radio Network, uh, 2 o'clock every Tuesday. Wednesday is 216 to blend. That is 12 midnight, 8 a.m., 8 p.m. WTNUPhilly.com, 1230 every Thursday. I say podcast radio network on Friday, 10 a.m. THC Media, Saturday, 10 a.m. Sunday, we are still looking to lock something out, preferably on the West Coast. You know what I'm saying? Baylor can get you something customized and you can get hype on your radio station. We can make all that happen for you. Um, custom Hustle World, like we already talked about on Instagram, Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. Get your custom jerseys, jackets. Uh, we got the sweatsuits, the T-shirts. You know what I'm saying? They're all one of one unless you buy four. And H2H Cleaning. And H2H Cleaning is my cleaning company. You make it worth my while. I will slide. Baylor, you did not tell the audience where you are from, though, on the West Coast. Let them know exactly. International hype, not just the hashtag. Oh, man. Life. That's South Central California. Born and raised, baby. Eastside, baby. Copy very that. important. So as my- very important to know. We tell you where not to go. Check in with us. So as my man just told you, like I said, if you make it work my wall, I will slide. We do roof and plumbing, HVAC cleanups. Um, that is at H2H Clean on Instagram only. Now, like I said, my man came through for me in a pinch. Barrel was also featured on episode two of the How to Hustle podcast. Mm-hmm. So that's how far back me and my man go pre How to Hustle, get my man Barrel been tight. Now. Uh, this uh, topic for the day is should all relationships have breaks? Usually we let the guests go first, but since my man came pinch hitting in here for me, I'm going to go first. We're going to switch it up today. Um, should all relationships have breaks? Meaning in any relationship, we could talk uh, your relationship with your wife. We should talk the relationship with your man. Not, mm, I guess not the relationship with your kids. You don't really know if there's no breaks to be had in that relationship because we talked about that before on a parenting break episode. Shouts out to Barb was on that one. Um, so I guess not all because you can't take no break from them kids, but, um, should those relationships have different breaks where you just, even you and your wife could be just like a weekend getaway for her and the girls, we can get away for just you. We can get away for just her. How would you, you know, categorize those situations? Talk to me. Well, yeah. Well, now that you broke it down, that kind of makes sense. Then yeah, everybody needs a break then. You know what I mean? Now in marriage, you got to slow down on that because, uh, that's a different level. You got to you got to duke that out instead of going four rounds or eight rounds with your girlfriend or your boyfriend. Uh, you got to go 12 rounds every bout with your spouse every day. So it's good to have maybe 
uh, a weekend with the fellas or a weekend with the ladies off and stuff like that. But it doesn't happen that often. You know what I'm saying? Taking a break from your kids. I mean, taking a break from your kids can range from go, taking a trip to Target and not bringing, you know, not bringing the, the, the fast food back inside the house. You feel me? Uh, or, you know, if you need to do a getaway, which is you and your and your partner. Absolutely. So, yeah, you need a break from everybody. But just just know after that break. Is more important than work. And y'all respect work more than y'all relationships. Because you got to clock back in to get that money. Well, you got to clock back in and get, continue to get that love. So you need time apart to understand what you have. You know what I'm saying? And, and that person's uh, worth that they're bringing to the table. So if you're around that person every day, you bound to, you know, bump heads here and there and things like that. It's normal. But, you know, give it some time, recover from it. And if you need to take a break, you know, go ahead and take your break. But don't do nothing like DJ Envy did and give his wife 29 days. We're not doing that. We're not yeah, doing that. Yeah, that. that was insane. Um, yeah, never. Uh, you going for 29 days, I might ask my pregnant when you get back. Um, <laughs> and, she, and, she, and she might be pregnant. She might be saying? pregnant. Yeah, copy that. <laughs> um, I think that after 2020, when we all got stuck in the house with each other, that we all, even if you thought that like you don't need a break, that shit, you have to have a break. If you are never away from this person, you will never appreciate the things that they do for you. And those things could just be, if you into words of affirmation, just whatever your love language might be, it may be acts of service, it may be whatever it is that you like. Mm -hmm. But if you're never away from those things that you get from that person that you never even knew that you really loved that much, you'll never appreciate them. If I never miss you, you're never gone. If you never have a new story to tell me, if I'm there for every experience, then what are we ever going to talk about? You can't. Hey, I, I love see, my look, just There you go. There you go. No breaks <laughs> right there. <laughs> go ahead, mama. Go with mommy. Daddy's recording. Full time dad. <laughs> but hey, but I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad the baby popped in because look, going back to the kids, think about it. When you you know, when your kid goes off to school and stuff like that, it's a little bit different because, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you're going to see them, you're going to pick them up and things like that. But what about, you know, what about when they get to that certain age where they are going outside and chilling with their friends or spending the weekend over their friend's house? If you know, you trust them to, you know, or go to your cousin's house or their cousin's house or something like that, when or you go on a trip and come back. Just think about that time where there's no chaos going on and no no nagging and none of that. And that's been for 48 hours straight. Yo, you're not used to that. I need to get back to it. But, you know, initially you needed to get that break, you know, calm your nerves and stuff like that. But you're so you used to, to chaos. The thing there that you're talking about is the difference between the trip and the vacation. A yeah. trip is when you take your kids. Okay? You done went to, like, the water park or you know you went on a family trip that's not really about y'all you know what I'm saying? that's uh -huh. about getting the family a break from the everyday situation mm -hmm. vacation is when you get to close your eyes and you know you have something fruity you got a cigar going and this is all in the daytime you're not sneaking to try to get all this before somebody comes in the room and interrupts your situation mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. that's yeah. a vacation so yeah, so I mean, vacation. That's what I mean. Me and my wife, we we going on a vacation next week, next weekend, and um, you know, from time to time we split it in half. We do family vacations, and then we need our time. But we already know we can't be away from the kids too long, and if we can't be away from the kids too long, we definitely can't be away from each other for uh, for too long. But something we do know we need that break. Something you touched on in the beginning. My daughter threw me off. I was trying to get there. Uh, this goes back to that same parenting episode that me and Barb talked about this. And I said that on the episode. And uh, the break from your kids, if it's not just flat out, we going on a vacation or whatever, is when they're at school, you'll commute mm -hmm. from work. <laughs> okay. Like you said, I'm going to go run this errand. I'm going to go to Target by myself. I don't need to rush back. I don't need to try to make every light. You know, <laughs> I know if I go this way, I might get stuck in a little construction traffic. Get me an extra 20 minutes. When you go to the bathroom, close the door, because if not, they will come walking in on you, they especially will. if they're little like she is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Those are your breaks. You got to take those little wins to get those breaks and to get those moments of you time. Yeah. But also, like you was just saying now, 
when you take and you uh you, you you take your sabbatical, you and your wife is going away, you get a quick vacation, and my whole thing always be my wife would be like, I wonder what the kids is doing. Or, You're mm-hmm. not worrying about nope, ain't thought about the asses. They're fine. <laughs> like this yeah. ain't about them. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Tr- truth be told, truth be told, we go through that because being a parent is that's probably the one job that you you, I mean, as long as you're doing what you need to do and you have that love in your heart, that's a job that you'll never quit and you'll never get fired from. Uh, so that's an ongoing job. Even when my kids become an adult, that's still gonna be my that's still gonna be my child. So yeah. it's normal for us to be on a vacation, chilling and stuff like that. And it's usually when we don't have anything else to distract us from it. So I can just tell you like that: the more and more we start drinking. <laughs> the more and more we not thinking <laughs> you know what oh, I mean no. so, soon as we soon as we close the door and you're on your way to the airport or you're in the car driving wherever as soon as the door closed I ain't worrying about them they are good yeah because if yeah. I left them I left them if I left them they would grandma them, or they would bore <laughs> so mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying yeah. we ain't worrying about them. <laughs> especially especially in the beginning moments like get like you said getting to the airport get on that plane I'm good, but I, I'm not gonna lie. In the middle of that, in the middle of that vacation, I'm gonna be thinking, you know, you're gonna get the FaceTime call. And so from the little from the smallest one, you know, she got the privilege. She gonna call you. Nah, the first time we went without my daughter, some my oldest daughter somewhere, and she FaceTimed us on the beach. She was like, Y'all went to the beach without me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, um, and, but, but you know what though? And, and we and we allow our kids to have that type of uh you know, um, we allow them to express themselves like that because my daughter, she used to set trip on us when we used to go to the, uh, we go to the jacuzzi a lot. She was like, y'all go to the jacuzzi without me? So we brought her and, you know, she'd be chilling sometimes, but then she'd be wanting to go before we wanted to go. So we had to explain to her, nah, jacuzzi time is for us. You know, we'll take you some other time or we'll take you to the pool, but jacuzzi time is for us. And then we explain it to them. That's another thing. You got to have that understanding between you and your partner and you got to have that understanding between you and your friends, your kids and everybody got to understand like sometimes you just need time to yourself. Sometimes you need quality time with your partner and sometimes you just want to be with your kids. So you got to tell your job, yo, sometimes I need to just be home with my family. You know, I need this time off. This is where I was about to switch it up now from let's let's get outside of just the family dynamic in the house and talk about your different relationships with your friends. Yeah. Or your fa- your family members outside of your household, uh, do you think those relationships have to have breaks? Um, they they should depending on how closer the 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 friendship is. And the only reason why I say that is because I'm not in a situation where my friends are r- right down the street or around the corner. We all spread out, so I always say we far enough to where nobody gonna pop up, but close enough to where we could pull up. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So um, it just depends on That's your, a good thing, man. Yeah, yeah. It just depends on how your relationship. We are we actually in the red. We need we need our, our our fellowship time. You know, me and my brothers, we need that time more than ever now and more of it, you know. So we do set aside we set aside some time, you know, twice a year to go to the summer league in Vegas, uh op- uh college football opening weekend. Uh, we go out there, bet and stuff like that. But it's more coming together, taking a break from the family and chilling with the mm-hmm. friends. So we don't really have that. We always around each other. So we need to have a break from each other. And no, truth be told, all my friends got kids, you know, and some we, we, we kids come family, you know, in some cases. So they already know it's not even one thing. We don't even have to discuss a break. It's mandatory. <laughs> Everybody else doing their own thing. I would say them relationships need breaks too because they need refreshers. Because if you've been friends with somebody for long enough, then y'all have had three, four evolutions in that friendship because you've been coming three, four different people. You go from the person you was when we was growing up as kids to our teenage selves to young, dumb, and reckless to, mm-hmm. like you said, now you become fathers, you got responsibilities now. Yeah. Uh, most people will try to like, weaponize that against you though and tell you like you changed when yeah you should have changed oh yeah if we've, I love been, friends, if we've been friends all of this time and i went from a six-year-old to a 38-year-old a 40-year-old we should have changed like oh, yeah we should be looking I love, at things I, love, different. I love those cats i love those cats that be, i don't know who gave them that platinum line 
and thought it was hot. But yeah, nigga, if you haven't changed, that's a problem. You, you yeah. haven't changed. Yeah, you've wasted thirty years. <laughs> like, Dog, I don't even I don't even consume music the same way. I don't even look at women the same way. I don't even talk to people the same way I used to talk to them 10, 15, 20 years ago. So yeah, I definitely changed. You need to try I was it. Telling, I was telling, we was talking about like uh, cheating, as you know, that's always the hot topic, uh, at work yesterday. And I'm like, I handle things which could be viewed as an immature way. Uh, I was a lot more ignorant before I was a father and a husband. I mean, I would flat out just tell you, I ain't looking for a relationship, and you know, that that's what this is. This is not going to grow into that. Now, I never looked at that like it was just an ignorant situation, but like I was just flat out just trying to let you know, like, this is what it is, and this is what it's going to be. Now, looking back at that, and like my wife being my wife now, it's like I put you in some situations that could have been a bit difficult for a 22 year old to handle. Uh, for a 21 year old but you don't have that kind of perspective when you ain't too much older than that because you don't have those type of life experiences to look at it like that but like looking back on it then it's like yeah man I became a like I changed a whole lot especially if I run into certain people it'd be like damn that's crazy like hype you really got two daughters like nigga you got two daughters like nigga you got three kids <laughs> what the yeah. like, I, I, well I, I personally believe that um you know, cast that was born in, in the 80s and the early 90s. Um, we've been through some stuff, but we also are closer to uh, the younger generation, whereas the older gener our older generation, we didn't, you know, they wasn't really in tune or in touch with what we was doing around that time. So we kind of understand uh, what the younger crowd and, 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 you know, what they go through and things like that. We can relate to it. We also feel... We never really understood how young 40, 30 and 40 is. You know, when I was you young. Don't until, you, you don't until you hit like 28. It, it, oh, it, right, right. <laughs> like, but but when you young, you look at that 30 and 40, like, dang, they old. But then when you get to old age, as shit, yeah. Mm -hmm. But when you get there, you like, nah, this is not what they, you know, it was just different times. So this is what that is, though, is the technology. Uh. If you was like you said, late eighties, nineties, that was that was my era, and when I was born, uh, you got enough of the old school way of the communication and all of that. You didn't have a phone and none of that when you went outside and or a way to call your mom and that. Mm -hmm. Now there's a totally different way, like you said, they Facetiming you and you can get a whole location on where they're at. In those days, when you was a kid. It was all about the community coming together to raise those kids. It's yeah. nothing like that now because everybody is so focused and central on my kids and my family and my situation. You ain't worried yeah. about the little boy who lives next door who's running out in the street with the car coming. Back yeah. then it would be like, yo, or the people knew don't fly down here because it's kids playing in the street. Yeah. That was also a thing that I always reiterate is back when I was a kid, danger is over there around that corner it's on that block it's around that way and you mm -hmm. just knew to stay away from those areas now yeah. because everybody ain't worrying about community everybody's just worrying about what they got going on and it's like danger is just every fucking way it, it brings <laughs> bring, bring it back to the topic it seems like the world now is taking a break from each other like like we all taking a break from each other because we keeping our like we was we was actually in the jacuzzi last night talking to some other folks and we was like, yeah, the world seemed like the area that we stay in. Oh, it's fire. We we good. We good. In, but we still don't trust our kids to go out. Mm -hmm. You know, where back then I, I grew up in South Central California, not too far away from where Ricky got shot. But we was outside. We was outside yeah. running up and down the block, water balloon fights. You know what I'm saying? Climbing on people's roofs, barking with the dogs, all kind of random stuff. But we didn't have to worry about, you know, getting snatched up or anything like that. But now you fast forward. Um, I don't want I can't I, I, I'm not going out. I mean, I'm not letting my kids go outside unless I'm outside with them or whatever. So going back to the whole community thing that I think that being gone, I think that started to drift off into the 90s. And then after that, with the addition of social media, um, it's like we just did we distance ourselves from that unity. You know what I mean? To where we're not looking, we're not caring about, like you said, the next door, next door neighbor or the kid four down, 
four houses down and stuff like that. It's just not like that anymore. I look at that like this is like generation three of babies having babies. Yeah. And when we was coming up, you had the structure of like those elders who would be looking out for the whole situation. We don't oh. have that now. If your that- elders are 55, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and still at the bar, if your elders are not thinking about your elders ain't really elders. You know what I'm saying? No. <laughs> like, Oh, we just finished that's explaining what, to y'all. That's what the whole situation that, is. That's why yeah. I always tell people the, the answer to all of those questions is usually bad old heads. Because if you got a kid that's in a situation that they ain't supposed to be, it's because nobody never told them, get the fuck from off this corner. Get from around here. You not yeah. doing this. Same thing yeah. like you said, it was crazy out there. Hey, I'm from South Philly. It been crazy out here, but you had old heads who would tell you, get the fuck off the corner. It's not, you can't be out here right now. You right. can't be over here right now. Go back in the house. Go back down the street. Like I said, danger is over here. Get from over here. Why y'all even walk around here? Go to the store around the other way. Like now, without that different type of structure, because like you saying, when we was kids, we was out with no phone or nothing or no way to communicate with us. But you knew, have your ass back at a certain time. The street lights get on. It's time to be on the block. Three <laughs> lights. Three lies. And so roll call. Niggas be we on the block, can't get off the step. Everybody on one step, and you don't want to be that first one to get called in the no. house. Nah, nah, because <laughs> you already know the consequences is you're not going to be going outside the next time. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. To get the opportunity. So, um, no, nah, I want to give a shout out to my boy 12 Cal, the 12 Cal podcast. I told him, I said, the reason why I feel different is because we don't have no more big mamas. We don't have no big mama. We don't have those no more. You know what I'm saying? Now the world is full of quote unquote rich aunties and uncles that went away. Hell. If y'all want to call me that, I am that. I'm I'm 50 miles away from where I was born and raised. You know what I mean? It's crazy because we just, me and my wife was just talking about soul food. And I'm like, Doug, you said the big mama's, big mama's gone. Big mama been a, a long gone situation. Yeah. <laughs> and big mama wasn't just a person. Big mama was a culture. You know what I mean? Copy. Big mama, it, it don't matter if you from South Philly. It don't matter if you from South Central. It don't matter if you from Chicago. Dog, you know, once you stepped in big mama's house, you not cussing? Yeah, y'all gonna mm-hmm. come in. There. Yeah, you and your favorite cousin gonna come in there high because y'all took a break from each other. <laughs> now y'all just came, y'all just linked back up. But, but before you walk, before you walk in that door, you gonna go, all right, yo, no, nah, we going. Even yeah. if it was like you hey. saying, we could be, yo, we friends, but we know we going past go get cuz from the house. We can't go in her house, so you gotta, yo, look, is it cool? Spray some more stuff so she don't spell hey. it. Hey, Listerine, now, Listerine niggas, strips, bubble gum. Niggas, niggas come in and pass. Grandma or grandpa the joint, or they copping. <laughs> no, niggas is walking in the kitchen smelling like a meth mat, a meth lab, or whatever. But we, we don't have that anymore. I, I'm watching these YouTube interviews and listening to these podcasts, interviewing some of these moms that's in their 40s and 50s, and they talking about, you know, they I I I I got this house. This is a house for everybody, but your house is full of gang members. They full of active gang members. But that's you know what, what I mean? I'm saying. And then that's the problem is that this is the person who's structuring the situation. And this is how you know what I'm saying we way off topic. But um, <laughs> no, we have to go yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but this is that yeah, though, like I said, bad always is always the answers to those questions. Now, before we wrap up the episode, we want to turn it on to you. Uh mm-hmm. Baylor, my man, has 57 different things going on, as you heard in his rundown. That's why I love it, man. Love a man who's all about his hustle. Talk to us a little bit about the different situations. When I hit you, you said, man, I was pressing up some merch. Talk to us. Uh, well, uh, pressing up the merch is not, I mean, probably 50% of it, maybe even less uh, 50% of it is for y'all. You know, that, that 60% is like therapeutic for me. You know what I'm saying? I just do that because I'm a creative person. I've always been a creative person since I was a, when I was a young kid. So creating merch uh, making videos, uh, even like my podcast, my show is all therapeutic. So, um, I don't, you may not see me, um, uh, market my podcast, like the average podcaster. Why? Because I don't consider mine, uh, just an average podcast. Not, I'm not saying that is not an average. What I'm trying to say is it's a time capsule for me. It's not necessarily my podcast to share with other people. It's a time, it's a time capsule. So when I'm gone, the people that I love or the people that I met that I'm cool with can go back 
and revisit my life. And they can't add anything to it because it's already in auto. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Uh, everything I do is it, it from this day on, or, or I would say since my late 30s, now I'm 40, it's just been therapeutic for me. So I listen to mute, like I said, I listen to music different and things like that. Uh, I make playlists, I make merch, uh, I do podcast episodes. I like being on other people's shows. Um, the whole nine, you know what I'm saying? I'm part of different podcast crews because I get along with everybody. So we talk about different topics in which each, each and every different podcast. Uh, I like being versatile like that. You come to LA, I pulled up, I pulled up on your brother. Mm-hmm. When he came out here. Yeah, he just, told me when he came out, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first thing he hit me up, I'm pulling up. Now, y'all need to stop going to certain places where I can't park. But that's a whole nother story. Stop going too <laughs> far, all right? You know what I mean? When I say come to L.A., come to L.A. Don't go to the outskirts of L.A. and say, yeah, this is where I'm at. I'm not pulling up if I'm going that far. But I did pull up <laughs> on your brother. Uh, shout out to Autumn Aries. She was out here recently. I pulled up on her. Man, that's just, I, I think, going forward, that's just going to be my life, meeting more interesting people. Uh, we don't necessarily have to build anything outside of just a cool relationship. But if anything else is is there for us to achieve, let's go ahead and do it. Because uh, I'm here to have fun and to be relaxed and less stressful uh, for the you know the second half of my life. Last thing before we wrap up the episode, episode 97, we coming up on a beam very soon. When you hear my name, what do you think of? When somebody say, you know the boy Hank, what would your response be? workaholic a workaholic uh there's not too many podcasters shout out to shan she's up there too but you are more uh you have this you have this more friendlier should night approach and what i mean by that is uh you whatever you look forward to or whatever you are into you really do it you know what i'm saying i still get the i get the text messages every week i give it the thumbs up to let you know I received it. You know what I mean? Uh, you started your own merch. And when I first met you, we were supposed to be a part of one of the hugest events. And I called- Goddamn 2020. Yeah, I <laughs> called, you know what I'm saying? I called the people in charge before they even met you, before they even knew you. I said, look, I don't know who y'all got on the ticket right now, but I promise you, you gotta mess with these cats up in Philly. They, they, I, I don't want I didn't want to compare y'all to anybody because I don't want to disrespect anybody. But I was like, yo, they like the Philly Wu Tang. It's a gang of them. You know what I mean? And I'm like, but you set aside from all them, is like I will consider you, I will consider you like risen. You know what I mean? Like holding it all together, bringing the pieces, you making those phone calls to not just people that you cool with, but you making phone calls to people you don't even know from this city, from this state. Yo, my name is Hype. This is what I'm doing. Put me on. Can you help me with this? And this, that, and that. I'm like, damn, you was having me do shit that I ain't even do for myself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's that drive that I think everybody needs it. And I think you will make Kobe proud because it's like you, you'll think of something and then you go ahead and execute it. A lot of, a lot of average human beings don't do that. As simple as it may sound, a lot of people don't do that. Uh, one, I appreciate that. Two, I always tell people conversations without execution is just us talking. Yeah. We're just wasting time and air if we ain't going to actually execute this plan. And um, shit, like, yeah, I mean, that's me in a nutshell. I'm an extremist. If I'm doing something, I'm all the way in it. I don't know how to half do shit. I don't know how to half be involved. If I'm in, I'm in with both feet. And we gonna let the results be what they are, but I can't never let nobody say like that I slacked on my part. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My yeah. part is always gonna be taken care of. If you tell me how to, that I'm doing this, then if I'm just setting screens, then look, these are gonna be the best scenes, screens ever set. You need me in the corner. I just I always tell people that I'm a ball dominant guard. I can't just be in the corner. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Spot up Johnny. I will run the plays and I will execute them best for all of us. But sometimes your role might be a little different. And like I said, I can't let nobody outwork me in them situations. That's but, a fact. Uh, let me ask I you a question. You. Let me Go ask ahead. you a question before we get out of here. Four-time champion, one-time finals MVP, gold medal, been to the finals seven times, one all-star appearance. Does that person get into the Hall of Fame? No, that's a Hall of Very Good. Uh, 
the Hall of Very Good is not the Hall of Fame. If we're okay. telling the story of whatever sport that, that is or whatever genre that is, because it could be music or what have you, they don't have an actor's Hall of Fame. You might want to work on that. Uh, but if you can't tell the story without talking about that person and those contributions and those moments, then they don't need to be in there. Well, then I, but so that's, that's where we're going to, we're going to have to disagree because it well, so I didn't put a name to it. I said it, that his name is Iggy and he had that moments, like, he, he had moments that's, in the finals that's, though. But copy that's ring of honor. You know what I'm saying? That's how this hall of very good. You could be in the ring of honor. A dude like Avery Johnson was integral to the Spurs early days, nineties Spurs basketball, but he's mm-hmm. not hall of fame. He's ring of honor for the Spurs. His jersey Avery, doesn't need to be But Avery, Avery Johnson never had the opportunity to be the number one option on any team. Iguodala had it. Iguodala was getting <laughs> the torch. Iguodala was getting the torch in Philly at one point. He just didn't he hold was. it down. Yeah, he was. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so like he was. He did. It was his team when AI got traded and all of that. But ultimately, like they weren't a threat to do anything ever. No, no, but but that but I didn't look at him as a player that would go into the Hall of Fame as a number one option type of player. I looked at it as a glorified role player, and he had a major part in them winning. Did he not? Nobody else. Yeah, but that's why the the homie's gonna laugh at me and say, "Bro, he contained Bron, but Bron averaged forty. Okay, so you take Iggy off of him. Now LeBron averages sixty. No, I was about to see. That's people always just give you the flat numbers, but they don't tell you about. Yeah, you did. You're not making the shots against Iguodala. If you took 35 shots to get 40, that's not the same. You, know what I'm saying? Yeah. you held your own. You held your ground. But that's why I said that's a great warrior. You know what I'm saying you need to be honored by the warriors. You hall of very good. That's ring of fame. I mean, that's ring of honor guy. He should have a joint up in the jo- in the stadium. It says Andre Iguodala. Now, know, do you think it's do you, do you think it's because he stole? Ah, he broke up on me right there. I don't know what just happened right there from my man Beller. We go ahead to end the episode right there. That's episode ninety-seven of the How to Hustle podcast with Hype Beller. I appreciate you coming on, bro. We are out. Philly, Philly.